everybody. Welcome back to a shot of Business Central and Beer. And here we're in the shot segment. So we're going to give you some Business Central news and updates. Uh, most notably, uh, over the past 30 days, uh, we have had 2022 Wave 1 rollout. Uh, the rollout started in mid-late April. Uh, there was actually some a pause on some of the environments being updated. Um, and then probably around early May, um, most of them, most environments should have been updated to version uh, 20.0, which is 2022 wave one. So uh, hopefully your environments, if you're running Business Central online, have been updated to version 20. And as a matter of fact, as we sit here at the very end of May, version 20.1 has already been deployed uh, to many environments. And there's uh, a few updates to that. There's some localization updates, and then there's some some feature changes that are pretty, uh, I guess, you know, non non important uh, for most Boring. people. <laughs> yeah, you know, like fraud protection headers in the UK, country regional expansion, power platform and logic apps connector, yeah. um, and then uh, add add action on card and list pages to trigger a, a chosen flow from a web mm -hmm. from the web client um and then um I, so, think, I think what was funny is that the country regional expansion was actually a lot it was 20 new countries yeah yep yeah. that's that's what it says yeah. so pretty 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 good amount you got your angolas your Bahrains, your botswanas Cyprus, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Jamaica, Maldives, Maldives, uh, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, Trinidad, Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, oh. Uruguay, Zimbabwe. So yeah, so I guess it's BC is now available in more than seventy countries. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research. I wonder if it's the same countries that the podcast is available in. Ah. Probably there's probably a good amount of overlap there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's uh, 20.1 uh, that, sh that should be out. Uh, one of the. Um, so, yeah, so so hopefully those those updates again, it's again and I, I, I appreciate I will tell you still and I know I say this quite often, but I still appreciate every time I, I get emails that say that all all these environments have been updated to automatically to the next and greatest version, you know, right, um, right. Without any any action, you know, being required. It's, it's right. So looking back five, six, seven years ago, it's pretty amazing that it happens, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, you, you, yeah. I mean, in the old, you know, in the old days, you, you deployed your software. We hope, hope, hopefully, you went live on the latest version at least. You yeah. Know, when you deployed right. it, and then you knew you were going to be out of date and have to go through an upgrade in a year or two. Um, and and uh, it, it really is great um, to yeah, see. Yeah, people would put off the updates for like a year or two. Like you're saying now it's every month. They're just there. It's it's there for cloud. It's amazing. Yeah. Yep, I do have some uh, some additional uh, little updates here. These are some some things. So I, you know, kind of at a macro level, uh, Microsoft kind of announced their results uh, for the latest quarter, and uh, there's a few tidbits that are related to Business Central in here uh, and indirectly Power Platform. So Microsoft says that the the Power Platform is is a two billion dollar annual business. Uh, currently with growth uh, over 70%. So it's um, huge. Yeah, huge that is, number. That number is by far and away a lot more than I would have expected it to be. I would have expected it to be kind of on par with everything else. 20, 25, 30% tops. 70% is a huge number. Yeah. And Biz Business Central is, is part of the Microsoft Business Applications Group. Um, which which Microsoft says now has more than five hundred thousand customers that are part oh, of that. Oh, so Business Central is part of it. Yeah. 
yeah, all the Dynamics 365 products and Power Platform fall under there. Um, gotcha. So over 200,000 Power BI uh, customers uh, as well. Yeah, it's a pretty popular product. <laughs> Yeah, so I won't get in. You know, those are the those are kind of the 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 business central kind of specific uh, numbers uh, that were out there. Um, you know, there are all a couple other little things that I, you know Microsoft is doing more with. Um, I think we've talked about this in the past. There's you know on on, on the Azure part of the Azure cloud services, uh, they've created. There's the ability to create what's called a data lake. Um, yep. meaning just a big repository of data that you can access for various things. And uh, there's some some activity going on within Microsoft doing uh, some some new things with Business Central and the Azure data lakes for data warehousing and analytics uh, purposes. Yeah. Um, and they just recently announced also that um, the default database that um, if you're using Power BI in in Business Central, the the default uh, database is going to be the replicated copy of the Business Central database. And Say that again. So the default database is going to be the replicated yeah. copy. So, so yeah. So let me. I have to back up. A okay. Step. So <laughs> so when you're running Business Central online, uh, Microsoft is actually maintaining kind of two copies of your Business Central data. Okay. There's your your actual production environment. And then it's kind of mirroring uh, a copy of that in a second database. For backup purposes or? Um, actually for performance purposes. So what you can do is you can actually set up reports to run against the mirrored copy of the database. Oh. Right, and there's Speak. actually several reports that are standard that are that are out of the box with Business Central. They're running against this mirrored copy of the database. So technically, uh, they're running in the background, but they're not affecting any of your actual performance. That's exactly right. Yes, it's to minimize the performance impact on your production environment. And and what Microsoft has now changed is that all of the Power BI. Uh, reports now run off of that mirrored copy. That, that's actually pretty a big deal, I would say, right? Because yeah. some of these Power BI reports, you know, let's just say hundreds of thousands of Excel lines or whatever it is, right? I mean, it, it could take a lot of time to to run their report. Absolutely, yeah, and and even even the, even built-in reports, so what inventory valuation report or whatever it is, these are pretty intensive uh, processor intensive reports. Uh, Microsoft has out of the box set those to run against this this copy. So, um, yeah, these are some of the really under the hood, you know, optimization improvements that they're making. So, um, so you may see some stuff in the future about more expanded use of these uh, Azure data lakes. Not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, <clears throat> and then we did get kind of a little bit of a sneak peek on. Uh, Microsoft's roadmap for 2022 release wave two, which is soon approaching in October. <laughs> Happens I mean, a lot faster than you think. You know what? Yeah, take a big gulp it in, you know, <laughs> um, and then some other long term goals. And, and you know, a lot of the. A lot of the the bullet points um, of, of where is Microsoft focusing are, are things that, that you know, it's just kind of vague in general, like improved performance and resource utilization, improved onboarding, better power platform integration, right? Better development tools. It's um, almost so, like a given for every every major release. Yeah, aren't, aren't they? Yeah, they're continuously doing all those things. Uh, right. But there is one noteworthy thing that I think is worth mentioning in here that is that is improved permissions management. Oh, man. So setting up user permissions, right, as uh, has long been uh, the bane of several people's existence, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so, so I, mean, I, I personally looking at, it, I don't know how they can make it any easier, but uh, or how they could simplify it. It's pretty, but it's it's good if they yeah. can. Yeah, the way I mean, the way permissions are set up now, I mean, you literally have the 
you know, the, the utmost flexibility in terms of what you want to give someone the ability to see or to edit or to delete or to run. Um, but, you know, with flexibility comes complexity. Yeah. So Very true. trying Very true. to find that happy medium in the middle of, you know, we 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 want to give you this flexibility, but we also still have to make it less complex. Yeah. And, and it's hard. Teams. It's hard to do. So. Um, what else you got? You know, um, we got that. Um, you know, otherwise, and I, I, I'm not sure this is just a piece of news, you know, in, internal Microsoft stuff. You know, there's um, some some changes taking place within Microsoft and the business applications group and some of the, some of the leadership. Um, I don't I don't know if mo most people, uh, you know, if it really impacts them in terms of who's who's doing what within Microsoft. Um, but I did. I did find it interesting that um, the, the the leader of the group who's responsible for the partner program okay. is is that that Microsoft is rolling out a completely new partner program like this year. Yeah. That the leader know. of that group is leaving Microsoft. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's not the, the I, I recently read that James Phillip left James Phillips left Microsoft and I was that I wonder if he's that same guy. Uh, this is a, this is someone else um, and I, I apologize. I don't have his name at, um, yeah, no worries. No worries. at just my disposal, but kind of I, I just thought I just <laughs> thought it's funny that they, they just completely revamped the partner. It used to be called the Microsoft Partner Network. Yeah. And now it's called the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program <laughs> with a whole a bunch of, uh, you know, new requirements and changes that are part of that. Um, but just just thought it uh, interesting that the the uh, the leader the of it is, the, is left. The person, yeah. at, the person at the top <laughs> of that is, uh, you know. Is, is departing and moving on to some other some other company. So we should uh we should we should build some squares to see if it gets revamped again in the next year or two. Then <laughs> what's the the over under on yeah. on the next major changes to the partner right. program? Yeah. Uh, too funny. There you go. Well, I think I think the over I think uh you know if you if you took if you picked four years uh, between when the last set of changes were released in this one and you took the under you'd, you'd have won oh, that absolutely <laughs> all right anything That's else about... before i jump into the few things i got yeah go ahead go for it all right so i noticed that uh <clears throat> finally available is the uh, new demo tool and demo data uh for manufacturing scenarios for partners to demo manufacturing uh, organizations and it says that the demo tool is available. Uh, it's called Contoso Coffee. It's an extension that you can install into any environment. Uh, I did not get a chance to find it and actually install it, but I believe it's 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 available right now. So that's pretty good for 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 partners. Contoso Coffee. That's a manufacturing company right up your alley, huh? Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then uh, the only other thing I got is. It's interesting that Mike Morton was doing a uh, uh, an interview, I believe it was with Dynamics World, and you know he was asked about exposing information to people who don't have licenses and whether or not, um, you know, Microsoft is about finding new scenarios to get these same people involved at the team license member level. And I'm going to read to his response. He says, "Yes, and right now the access they're getting is read only. You can imagine in time." Maybe those folks have the ability to do things like accept or reject. It's not like they're going to get significant write access, but there could be certain collaboration or workflow scenarios that they can enable. Uh, can enable. They may not be creating records or maybe not even modifying them, but doing something to move the business processes along. I thought that was kind of interesting. So they're kind of alluding to maybe team functionality licenses getting a little bit more uh, functionality, but. To his respect, though, 
they're not only read only right now. I think we found in the past that you can do minimal things with them, right? You can, yeah, you can edit existing records. Right. So you, you cannot it. insert a new record into the database. Right. So you can't create a new quote, but you can edit an existing quote. Correct. Yes. Gotcha. Or even, right. And I think, um, and I, 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 I believe, you know, that maybe there's, there's even even another user type that doesn't exist today that that could exist, um, right? So you have you have a full user, right? With with prices of uh, you know for a business central premium license a hundred dollars, right? Yeah. And then you've got a team member which is like what I don't know eight dollars ten dollars yeah um, well yeah right around there. U S U S dollars, um, and and and. You know, and though the the team member right can can read any data from Business Central, can run reports, mm -hmm. can edit existing records. Um, I think maybe maybe somewhere somewhere in the middle there there's still what what maybe used to be called like a more of like a limited user. Mm -hmm. um, I think of like a salesperson, right? Um, maybe a salesperson can create new contacts. Gotcha. They can create an interaction to say that they're, you know, they they talk to someone at a, at a prospect or a customer. Mm -hmm. um, right. So or they or they could insert a comment maybe yeah. somewhere. So so th but those are all record inserts, which are yeah. which are prohibited from the team member. So, you know, I, I don't have any, uh, unfortunately, inside information that that's something that Microsoft's even considering right now. Uh, that's just my, my thought is that there's like a place maybe for like a, a $40 user a month. Um, oh, I got you. you. Know, so user a true limited user. That does, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, okay, you can insert records, but you can only insert these specific records, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe maybe that's what he's alluding to. I I, I don't know, but only time will tell, right? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, that's the two little bits of news that I got. Ken, you got anything else before we move on? No, I think uh, we're looking forward to speaking with Molly Fuchel over at Dynamics User Group. Doug? Doug, yep. It should, it should be fun. <laughs>